After, after radio chemotherapy in stage three, there were many attempts to improve uh, the curate or to prevent the relapse. You know that over time, when you deliver radio chemotherapy, over time, you start to observe uh, a growing um, risk or prevalence of uh, distant metastasis, so distant relapses, but also some local relapses. The time passing by, you have more and more distance and less and less local. But basically, you always have this dual risk of having a local relapse and a distant relapse. So all these maintenance treatments were done to try to reduce both risk, right? Local, but in particular, distant relapse. Um, also because the Americans were used to do that. They were used to give radio chemo followed by docetaxel. The level of evidence was extremely low, if any. But it was kind of a, a normal thing to do. So this is something which was questioned in many clinical trials in Europe, in US, showing that basically chemo maintenance, if you give radio chemo, like we said, it's very important to do, chemo maintenance doesn't add anything. So you shouldn't prolong chemo, also for quality of life purpose. It will not change the prognosis of your patient. So this was the first kind of disappointing thing. Treatment should be short. It's even kind of contradictory because you just give two cycles of chemo. In adjuvant stage one and two, you give four cycles, but here two, it's enough. You give two and radio chemo and, and radiotherapy. So other strategies might be interesting in maintenance. Uh, there were some vaccine trial. Vaccine is nice because you are in a setting of minimal residual disease, not really a, 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 a huge tumor burden at the time of radio chemotherapy completion. So it would be good to try to make the immune system respond to or attack the small amount of cells which could remain. So there was a vaccine trial called Stimuvax, uh, which unfortunately failed too. So the vaccine was not able to prevent local or distant relapse after radio chemotherapy. And then we moved into this new field of immunotherapy, and we got to know that immunotherapy with what we call the checkpoint inhibitors might be a way to create a maintenance or consolidation treatment in that disease uh, and improve the outcome of patients. And uh, adding targeted therapy to as a maintenance treatment is a, is a difficult question. For example, for the VGF uh, targeted therapy we use usually, the abevacizumab, we don't have it here after radiochemotherapy because you're not allowed to give bevacizumab with radiotherapy. In the early trials, it was giving rise to fistulae between the bronchi and the esophagus, so it was really a dangerous strategy. So you never give bevacizumab with the radiotherapy, so you, so you don't give it in maintenance because it's not in the strategy. Um, about targeted therapies, there was how there was one attempt to give gefitinib in unselected patients. Uh, after, you know, this is yeah, the American way, radiochemotherapy, docetaxel, and then patient could receive uh, a, a TKI, an EGFR TKI. It was gefitinib at the time, if I remember well. Um, so unfortunately, these patients were not doing better. I would even say something else. They were doing worse than the other ones. So by trying to treat more and more, there might be a point you harm the patient instead of improving the outcome. So in unselected patients, the one we see every day, so there's really no room beyond the radio chemo and the two cycles to give chemo or targeted therapy. So you have to find new strategies. Following chemo radiotherapy for, uh, for locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer, uh, immunotherapy may have a role because radiation causes re many effects to upregulate the immune uh, environment of the tumor. For example, by causing antigen release, changing the trafficking of uh, uh, T cells, and uh, permeability of uh, immune cells into the microenvironment, all of which would make the activation of the uh, immune system uh, much uh, easier and more effective for subsequent immunotherapy. Much of this work has been done in preclinical models, and there has been doubt about which dose and fractionation of tumor is best. Uh, but animal studies have always been of a limited number of fractions. Uh, and there's still controversy out there. But one concern of clinicians has been that administering radio immunotherapy during chemoradiotherapy may counterbalance potential benefits of immunotherapy because by repeating the radiation for weeks, you may in fact uh, kill off some of the activated uh, immune function, 
uh, T cells. And it might be a fine balance between efficacy and uh, toxicity. So radiotherapy has both pro-immunogenic effects, antigen release, activating T cells, dendritic function, tumor T cell trafficking, and um, killing of resistant cells. But it also has immunosuppressive effects by, for example, increasing uh, presence of myeloid uh, suppressor cells, myeloid derived suppressor cells. And um, so in, in a patient model, it's quite difficult to predict what, what is happening. But we know that some of these theoretical things uh, could play a role. And perhaps a very difficult problem is that we do not know what the pre-existing immune function is. So which are the tumors which need extra help from chemoradiotherapy? And which are the tumors which are uh, sufficiently immunoactive and where perhaps uh, radiation is not necessary or a different fractionation scheme is necessary?